Give us your thoughts about how you think the redevelopment agency remaining funds should be used. Uh, again, uh, that I'm going to um, uh, back off on that question simply because I do not have the information at this point to make these the, uh, proper decisions. Okay, all right. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about doing something to improve the downtown area of Mesquite. Uh, if you were elected to the city council, what would you recommend the city council do about the downtown area? Uh, once again, uh, uh, a sore point for me. I had an organization out of Scottsdale, Arizona. One of the um, uh, things we're lacking in this town is a quality pet store. I had a lot of uh, business with pet stores, PetSmart, Petco, but I also had 3,000 independents I dealt with throughout the country. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have one. We have some grooming parlors, but we do not have a pet store. This particular group looks for smaller cities with a population from 15 to uh, 30,000. And that includes surrounding communities. So in our case, it would be over 10 Bunkerville, et cetera. Right. Uh, they will not move into a community that has a pet smart or pet co within 25 miles. They, they don't want to compete with the big guys. It's kind of the old fashioned um, Sam Walton. You know, you go yeah. into a small town and you're the only game in town. Mm -hmm. But they're a quality organization. Um, I originally had uh, invited them uh, when I had dinner with the, with the president and invited them to come and look at Mesquite. Well, I was persistent. Now, this is long before any decision to run for city council and okay. before I was working for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh -huh. This is, a, once again, because I believe in Mesquite and I saw this would be a need and it would be, you know, to open a 25,000 square foot building in this town and a new business that I think would do very well because of the population of uh, animals in this town. Right where people are driving to St. George, they're driving to Vegas, it could be right here in town. Hmm. Uh, it seemed like a very good fit. Uh, I was persistent enough that he did send people out here. Now, I mentioned it to, prior to the, them becoming an official economic, de uh, economic development uh, group, um, I think it was Ken and, uh, and George Gall. Okay. Uh, that, you know, I said, I'm just, oh, you should tell us about it because we want to wine and dine them and, you know, take them around and show. That's not what they want. The reason that they're successful and they have uh, 50 locations and going on 90 by next year is because they choose their locations carefully. They don't want to be wine and dine. They send their own people to evaluate. Um, I got, after they had left and it was pretty much, I wasn't returning my phone call, but they're in a meeting. Uh, uh, finally gets on the phone with me and says, Chuck, you know, we sent people. We, they got, it, got into town, uh, you know, again, no fanfare, no welcome committee. They wanted to see, send their people out to look at the situation. And not necessarily to look for real estate, to get a feel for the community. Uh -huh. uh, that's how they, they choose their locations. That's step number one. Obviously, there's negotiations and everything else that follows, yeah. but step number one was they go down Pioneer Boulevard and they see the Walgreens, that's closed. Uh, they see open lots and they ask a few questions only to find out that, you know, they've been open for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Then they made the mistake of turning to our downtown area. Going down the Skeet Boulevard, going down to see the hotel that, um, you know, is painted on windows and um, graffiti and uh, just an eyesore. They turn the corner and see that shack that's on the corner. Or even though there's a beautiful um, business complex uh, poster there, um, what you see is a shack. It looks like a city in disarray. It looks like a city in ruin. Step number one, we did not pass. I think it's the city's job to clear that away. First off, it's unsafe. I've heard uh, asbestos is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, it was marked for demolition for what about six months, eight months? Yeah. And then they um, then they put a for sale sign on, on top of the for demolition sign, and the building is still there. Yeah. So I think the city has a responsibility to hold the um, the owners of these properties responsible. And I don't care that they might live in Utah. In fact, that's even more reason that the, uh, we should be act proactive 
in that these people from Utah are affecting the business here in Mesquite. Mm -hmm. And we're doing nothing about it. Okay. Um, give us your thoughts about the proposed Pilot Flying J project um, and others like it. You, you can uh, weigh in on the pilot project that was canceled if you choose, um, and that's fine. But that project and others like it in terms of balancing business concerns with public concerns and in terms of economic development. Well, the, uh, I will comment briefly on the Flying J. Um, the idea of having a truck stop in the middle of town, you know, at first glance without even going into the details, just looks like a bad decision. Bringing jobs to Mesquite is important. What, where, where the place is located um, it has to do with the type uh, of occupation and environment that it is going to um, create. Uh, in this case, having trucks pulling off the freeway, blocking up the uh, 122 intersection in, a, in an underpass that really is not set up for that. Mm -hmm. uh, having these tankers underneath the ground um, having, uh, when you look at the history of Flying J, the drugs and prostitution that accompany it, uh, and have been, and this isn't, you know, hearsay, this is, you know, fact, mm -hmm. uh, because they are a well-established company, mm -hmm. uh, you know, multi-million dollar company. Um, and to that end, they, um, they have a right to have their product in our city. In fact, to have those jobs in our city would be welcome. But this comes down to, you know, um, and I think uh, Al Lidman, and I'll give him kudos for this, for doing the due diligence, mm -hmm. looking at all ends of the situation. And Al, I know we're, you know, we're running for the same seat, <laughs> but, but I, I really praise you for uh, what you did here and, and looking at this and evaluating what is really good for the city. And this gets back to, you know, again, a long-term outlook versus a short-term fix. Mm -hmm. Long term, if they were at the exit 118, first off, the exit 118 would happen a lot faster. Yeah. You know, you know, you build it, they will come. Well, in this case, build something, and we will have that exit done in yeah. short order. Yeah. Uh, keeping it out of town, uh, not uh, messing with the flow of traffic, not bringing in the noise, uh, not bringing in the um, traffic that would uh, interrupt the flow of business to the Eureka. Uh, would interrupt the flow to the uh, Smith's Market, would interrupt the flow to all the local uh, businesses up and down uh, Sand Hill, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it would probably just crush the new AMPM market that opened up. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that they are bringing, one of the, the other uh, parts of their objective was to bring in two uh, fast foods. Well, what does it do for the McDonald's on the corner or the brand new Taco Bell that is just, you know, broke ground? Mm -hmm. uh, are we really looking long term what's going to be good for our community? No, and so I really have a problem with that and I am glad that it, uh, for the sake of the current city council that it did not become a locked out, drawn out battle because I think it would have been. And I think for a good reason and that's why again why I applaud um, Al Littman for uh, you know deciding what is best for the city. Yeah. It's very easy to go along with the flow. Yeah, it's going to bring jobs, it's going to bring money into the city but at what cost? And I think we really um, uh, have to take a hard look at every situation. And there will be other economic um, things that come up. I mean, I've, I've heard talk and talk over again about an outlet mall. Outlet mall would be fantastic. And mm -hmm. yes, would it be productive? I do believe so. Because of all the tra uh, uh, transportation that flies from Utah to Vegas and Vegas to Utah. Yeah. Uh, a nice stopgap point, and boy, does that fit into the um, the Palm Desert, Palm Springs area uh, uh, kind of manifesto, was get the people as they're coming off the freeway going from point A to point B, and we're, we're perfect for that. Would that employ uh, 50 people? Oh, sure. Would that employ hundreds of people? Yes. Okay. Is that something we really should be taking a hard look at? Yes. Now, I see a future there for uh, Mesquite. Uh, and the other thing we have to look at is the type of people it will bring in. Because again, long term, yes we want to make sure that everybody is employed in this city. And we want to offer jobs to them. 
but I was talking to Don over at Jade Sports. And, you know, what he's seeing as a downturn to his business has been the lack of families moving in. Mm -hmm. He required, you know, he, that's part of his business, the youth soccer leagues, how, you know, when they come to town and have their tournaments, it's wonderful for him. Uh, when um, the kids come in with their bikes and they, you know, they want to go mountain biking, well, this is, this is a key element, you know, and, and uh, I like to say that, you know, uh, old people change their shoes as often as kids, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> and uh, having the kids come in and, oh, I got to have the new, new, you know, the new Adidas, I got to have the new Nikes. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, this is key. Well, families, that's what's going to drive it. And we, we can't keep losing families. And I'm not saying anything that, you know, we don't want to welcome the retirees, mm -hmm. but we do need that element. I believe the retirees are still coming in in numbers, and then you look at our, our um, growth, and roughly, you know, it's about seven hundred to a thousand people a year. Yeah. And uh, and that's that's nice. It's great to have, but you know, how much money are those people spending in the community, and what type of uh, demographic are we bringing in? We can't appeal just to one demographic, and so I think we really have to look at what's going to to broaden the spectrum, and we have to use that as part of our economic outlook. Okay.